Hello, Cougar sports fans, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Cougar Sports TV for the fall semester. I'll be your host, Tyler Crane. We have a great show for you today. We're going to take a look at everything that's happened in the fall sports so far early on in the season. The exciting start to the 2011 sports calendar at Columbus State begins with the women's soccer team. Coming off one of the best seasons in school history in 2010, the Lady Cougars have opened this year 6-1-2 and have outscored their opponents 24-5 in the process. Freshman Kiana Nicholson and All-American senior Stephanie Lowry have shown that youth and experience can lead the way for head coach Jay Entlich's squad, sharing the team lead and goal scored with six apiece. The Lady Cougars look to continue their successful start to the 2011 campaign Friday night at the Walden Soccer Complex when they take on Peach Belt Conference rival Armstrong Atlantic at 7.30. If you can't make it out to the field, you can listen to our live webcast of the match on CSUCougars.com. Though the Cougars men's golf season is not in full swing yet, the men's team participated in the nationwide Golf 9-12 tournament in commemoration of the spirit of unity displayed the day after 9-11. CSU head men's golf coach Mark Immelman assisted in the planning of the tournament and he expressed his feelings about the tournament after the event saying America is such a blessing to us and the rest of the world to participate in an event like this is such an honor and I thank everyone who took part in it. Mark's brother 2008 Masters champion Trevor Immelman attended and participated in the event. The women's golf team officially got its season underway at the Smoky Mountain Intercollegiate while the men participated in Golf 912. The Lady Cougars finished in second place with a total two-day score of 633, only six shots behind tournament winner Shorter University. CSU junior Kamisha Anthony finished tied for second individually at the tournament, earning her Peach Belt Conference Golfer of the Week honors. Both the CSU cross-country program started the season in style at the Georgia Southwestern Remembrance Run. Both the, men, both the men and women took first place in the meet at the run. Sophomore Ian Edwards led the Cougar men to victory by winning the first race of his career in Americus. The CSU runners hit the dirt again over the weekend, competing at the Florida State University Invitational against 16 colleges and universities, including Division I opponents. The men finished ninth as a team overall, and the women finished in 11th as a team. Edwards had another strong performance in Tallahassee, finishing 19th in a field of more than 150 racers. The Cougars next put toe to dirt at the Charlotte Cross Country Invitational this weekend. The CSU rifle program has competed twice this season, losing two close shoots at Moorhead State and the University of Texas El Paso against UTEP and the University of Nevada. All-American junior shooter April Dunn has led the Cougars on the season, tallying, tallying the most cumulative points of any Cougar this year. At the UTEP shoot, Dunn's final total of 1158 trailed the eventual winner by only eight points. The team heads to Oxford, Mississippi for the Ole Miss Invitational this weekend. Want live score updates, information about upcoming games and events, to interact and ask questions during live broadcast of Cougar Sports? Well, you can do all this and more by catching up with Columbus State Cougar Athletics online via our website, csucougars.com. Columbus State University Athletics Online, your source for all things Cougar Sports. Welcome back to Cougar Sports TV, and boy, do we have a special treat for you here today. Joining us in the studio is Athletic Director Jay Sparks of Columbus State University. Jay, talk a little bit about what your vision is for this program moving forward. So that's a good question, Tyler. When, it, when I first got the, the job as Athletic Director, I said in the media press conference that I wanted every team to win the conference championship. Uh, but if I can be more specific, I want every team in the same year to win the conference <laughs> championship. Now, that's a lot of pressure that's right difficult. there. Uh, 14 teams, although all 14 aren't competing in conference championships, but 11 of them are. And so uh, if you add dance in there and if you add cheer in there, you could honestly say 13 teams are competing for a conference championship. And I want them all to win. Some of them have but not all of them have, certainly not all of them in the same year. So yes, that's a lofty goal, but if you don't set your goals high, you're never gonna reach high. And I really, really believe in that. And that comes from my coaching background. 
And how do you how do you implement that to your coaches and just give them that that confidence and that ability to sit there and go out? What do you do to support them to help that happen? Well, you know, I think I have to be honest with them. Uh, I can't I can't camouflage that I think they maybe have a good team when I don't truly <laughs> believe that, or maybe I don't think they're as good as they need to be on any given year. Or maybe I don't think that uh, a specific recruit is quite up to par with what they see, you know. I have to give those opinions. And it's not being critical. I think it's being honest. Maybe it's being devil's advocate. Some people would see that as, as a negative. I don't necessarily mean it to be negative. What I mean it to be is truthful so that Maybe it makes them take a step back and say, ooh, maybe I need to reevaluate. But uh, I've had plenty of opportunities to lose many a game <laughs> as a basketball coach, and I've had some fortunate years where I won a bunch. And so I feel like I have a little bit of experience, and I would like to pass that on. Now, I'm going to be at every game, and I'm not going to always like the outcome, especially if we lose. I probably take a loss as hard as any head coach. Uh, but I have, I have kind of embellished myself as much as I can into the CSU athletic program. And I'm looking for our head coaches and assistant coaches to do the same thing. Well, let's look at what's happened so far in the fall semester. Women's soccer is going. We've had a couple of golf events. Rifle's been going on cross country. We'll start with women's soccer. They've started 6-1-2. and two. Pretty good start, but they also expect to do better than that. They do, and, and I think they are, they are working off of history. Historical perspective is great, especially when it maybe gives you an edge when you're going into competition. Uh, oh, Columbus is always real good <laughs> in women's soccer, et cetera. And I, I agree, we are. But we are awfully young, mm -hmm. and we're awfully young at some skill positions that we can't afford to be awfully young at. But I've talked to Coach Entlick, and I said, I just admire the heck out of your coaching and your recruiting because I see this team really coming on strong at the end of the year. And so that's what I'm expecting. And, uh, and I truly believe they will. And it's a young team that is learning. And you mentioned that there's uh, so much youth on the team. One of, our, one of the girls, Kiana Nicholson, has performed very well. Six goals already this year. Well, Kiana is gifted. You know, as a soccer player, she is truly gifted. And there are other girls out there on the team that just work. They're so blue collar. They're so good within the role that they have uh, been established with uh, for soccer. But uh, but Kiana is a difference maker, and uh, she can do things that you just don't coach. And it's fun to have those on your team. Well, we're going to move on to a different sport. We'll talk a little bit about golf right now. There's a great event in Columbus, Golf 9-12, where everyone was celebrating the unity after 9-11, everybody coming together, and that was put on by the head men's golf coach here, Mark Rimmelman. Right, and, and uh, I was very fortunate to be able to participate in that. It was, it was overwhelming uh, to see all of the service people there that were either participating or supporting it. Uh, just a great event, especially a great event in its first year. And I expect it just to continue to grow and be around for an awfully long time. In the meantime, men's golf. Gosh, if there's a team on our campus that should be dynamite this year, <laughs> it's men's golf. They did lose one, I think, very key component uh, from last year to this year. But all in all, they, they have some talent on that team. <laughs> and they're competing right now uh, in Florida. So I expect and excited to see how those results come out. Much better than you and I could do on the golf course, I'm sure. At least better than you. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. Let's talk about the women's golf team. They've already competed in one event this year and has even had the Peach Belt Conference Golfer of the Week. Well, I, in, in my end of the year conversation with Brian Padgett, our women's golf coach last year, I said, Brian, I, I really think you're just one piece away from contending for the Peach Belt Conference Championship. And he thinks he got that. Now, the one thing that is always a, a common denominator is the difference in one day to the next in golf. You can, you can shoot 69 one day and 77 <laughs> the next, and you're the same golfer on the same <laughs> course. It is a mean sport. And so 
I think the most important thing that he gets out of his fall contest is to establish some consistency so that they're competing each and every time out. But yes, I do think he added that piece. And so therefore, I think he is easily in the top three in our conference. I, I just love the passion. I can hear it in your voice talking about every single program. We're going to move on to cross country. Men's and women's both won their first event of the year at the Georgia Southwestern Remembrance Run. Ian Edwards for the men's side has been phenomenal. As a matter of fact, today just won the Peach Belt Conference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Runner of the Week. Well, if we can fix Ian's back, which is, which is something that we're working on weekly to, to cure this because it, it can really cost him some significant minutes, uh, seconds for sure, minutes possibly, because he actually has to stop running yeah. for, for the pain to, to go away. And, you know, in a cross-country event, you just <laughs> don't stop running, but, but that's the situation he's in. And so we hope we can get that corrected. And if that happens, then, yeah, I think Ian can be up there in the, in the top run, as a top runner in the Peach Belt. Uh, but we lost, you know, oh. Meshach Koyaki, who, Maybe was the best runner, even though he didn't win the national championship, maybe the best runner in the, in the country last year. So that's not easily replaced. But you know what I think? I think J.D. Evelsizer, our cross-country coach, is the best in the business. And I think that he truly can make a good team just because of his knowledge and them believing in what he's doing. Yeah, Ian, he won that first event. Then they went and competed at FSU against Division One opponents, finished 19th in that race as well. So he's competing against solid competition. Right, and, and Coach Evelsizer told me, just to, to add to what you said, he was fourth uh, in the run after four miles, and that's when his back acted up. Mm. And so he had to stand and get rid of the pain <laughs> and then start again. And, you know, I can't imagine it, but... As he's standing there, you can imagine everybody running by him. And he was only behind the leader by less than a minute. That's right. Uh, so he could have been right up there. He, he would have been right up there. He is a very gifted runner. But, but they have a great team. They don't have, outside of Ian, and, and I'll speak on the girls' side too, they just have a lot of quality runners. Mm -hmm. They don't have that one that just overwhelms you with superstardom. Uh, but they all are very, mm -hmm. very good. And because of that, we think we're going to compete well. All right, we've, we've talked about cross country, golf, women's soccer. We're going to talk about rifle a little bit now. We already brought it up a little bit, mm -hmm. but what does rifle need to do to just kind of continue to get better and move forward? You know, the, the challenge that Mike Green, our, our rifle coach, has is only having four members on the team and, mm -hmm. and to not his doing, but truly his undoing is just people deciding they didn't want to shoot right. anymore. It wasn't important to them anymore. And, you know, you don't hold on to those people. So his, his squad's dwindled, dwindled down to four. Thank goodness only four <laughs> because you got to have that many to compete. But he's got four committed young ladies. And uh, it's neat to watch them because they're very compatible. They pull for each other hard. There's no animosity. They aren't concerned about who's the best or who's the worst. They're they're competing for CSU and CSU Rifle, and even more so, they're competing for Mike Green. And, uh, and I think that says a lot. And they improved, I can't say drastically, they improved overwhelmingly from match one to match mm -hmm. two, and then go to Ole Miss uh, this weekend to compete again. And I expect that, that improvement to be part of their nomenclature for this year in that they'll just get better and better and better as the season goes on. Very good. Now we're going to move to your sport. Men's and women's basketball is coming up here in a little bit in November. Can you give us a little preview of both teams? <laughs> you will be surprised. Maybe the listeners uh, will be surprised. That's probably the two sports that I try to stay away from okay. as much as possible. I understand. For my own <laughs> uh, senile <laughs> mind. Uh, you don't ever lose the opportunity of wanting to coach. I mean, it just stays <laughs> with you. And so the more I'm around it, the more I salivate to say <laughs> I wish I was coaching. But I also think sometimes the more I start doing coaching, uh, that even though I'm not out on the floor, I'll start coaching and lose sight of what my job is. <laughs> right. And that's being a director. So 
Uh, I try my darndest to stay away. I do appreciate Coach Moore, the men's coach, and Coach Norton, the women's coach, coming in and asking me from time to time uh, uh, suggestions or advice or direction or what do I think. Uh, I appreciate that because mm -hmm. it does keep me involved. And, and nobody's a better cheerleader once the game <laughs> starts than I am. But right now is not a good time <laughs> uh, for me to totally embrace basketball. I need to sit back. And so I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you interview those two coaches to All find right. out what what kind of team they're going to have. All right, Coach Sparks. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for giving us an interview here on Cougar Sports TV. We'll be right back with a segment where we're going to go and take a look at the Cougar of the Week from the rifle team. Love social media? Love Columbus State Cougar Athletics? Well then, interact with us and send us in questions during live webcasts or any other time during the week through our social media platforms. Find Columbus State Athletics on Facebook and like our page. Then head on over to Twitter and follow us at, at CSU Cougars. A segment we would like to introduce to you on Cougar Sports TV is the Cougar of the Week. The Cougar of the Week is chosen by our athletic department to recognize the best Cougar on the field throughout the week. Today, we are actually joined by April Dunn of the Rifle Team. April, glad to have you here. Thanks, thanks for having me. April, tell us a little bit about how the rifle season's gone so far. Um, it started off a little rough, but other than that, it's been getting better and better. So as much practice as we get, I think we'll get better throughout the year. You guys have gone to Kentucky to compete against Moorhead State and to UTEP. Talk about those two experiences. Um, Moorhead, it was good. Um, it was a long trip, but other than that, like the range was nice, but we had to shoot in separate rooms and stuff from everybody else, so it was kind of mixed up a little bit. And then, um, but when we shot against University of Texas at El Paso, it was, everybody was together. And so it was a little bit better environment and the range was a little bit nicer. So I think that's why that's what helped out. Very cool. Now you have started this season pretty well. How do you take the way you've been shooting, kind of help your teammates out, kind of lead them and, and teach them? Well, like it, I haven't been doing like way better than they have, so it, it's not like discouraging to them. So we're kind of like all there together, and so we're just progressing together. Like we're all just we're learning from each other and helping each other because there's only four people, and so we get that group bond that really helps out each other. All right, now now rifle is a, a co-ed sport, yet <laughs> for this team at Columbus State, it's four girls. How's yeah. that go? Um. We have some guys, but I guess, I don't know. They got intimidated by us girls, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, but it's worked out kind of better, I guess, because we can share that bond that girls have other than with a, another guy. Do you get kind of excited if you go up against and compete against the guys trying to beat them most of the time from yeah, other schools? Yeah, it's, it's really nice to beat guys. It's, <laughs> it's, it builds your ego, I guess you could say. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Now, April... Talk about why you chose the rifle as a sport. It's a little different for most people than that they normally get into. I started in high school for some reason. I think it was that I'm a girl. I want to go out and beat a guy because it was <laughs> just like I had a brother, and so that's what I did my whole life. But I think that that's part of it. Like I just that's the main reason why I started. Did your brother? shoot too? No, he was on the drill team, which did the spun the rifles and everything, but okay. no, it was kind of in the same, but he wanted to start after I started. But we didn't play. What, what did you compete against with your brother growing up? Um, we played like basketball and stuff against each other, and he always won, and then this is something that I knew <laughs> I could beat him at, so that's why I started. So you really, really just want to beat your brother. Yeah. I know how that is, <laughs> if you guys are watching. So talk about what you want to accomplish the rest of the way here as the season goes on? Well, I was, um, for me, like personally, I want to be an All-American again, like I was last year. And I want to be higher because I was second team All-American and that's still great, but I want to be first team All-American in both rifles. And then I want the rest of my team to be there with me. That's, that's a great attitude to have. April, thank you for joining us here. Thank you for coming out and congratulations on winning Cougar of the Week. Well, thank you for having me. That'll do it for Cougar Sports TV this week. I'd like to thank April Dunn and Athletic Director Jay Sparks for coming out and giving us interviews. We'll see you all next week, and as always, go Cougars.